Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Friday, October 9th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, Doctors Without Borders is calling the U.S. airstrike on a hospital in Afghanistan a war crime. So will anyone within the U.S. military industrial complex be held accountable? Yeah, I don't think so. Then, Barack Obama mocks gun rights activists, saying that we are full of crackpot conspiracy theories. Any gun safety measures are somehow an assault on freedom or communistic. There are all kinds of crackpot conspiracy theories that float around. There. Meanwhile, the Obama administration and the mainstream media remain completely silent about the obvious link between gun violence and antidepressant drugs. And what is the first shot that the medical industry wants to give to your newborn baby? InfoWars News Director Rob Dew in studio with David Knight. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Well, today, Obama, the hospital shooter, was in Oregon grandstanding about the school shooter that happened two days before his hospital shooting. And I want to talk about that hypocrisy right now. NPR puts it this way. Doctors without borders are now doctors in anguish. This hospital that was shot up, we need to put this in context. There were several hundred thousand people in that area who have now lost their only access to surgical trauma care. They say that at that hospital, they had treated between 20,000 and 25,000 people in the past four years. In just the week leading up to the shooting of the hospital by the U.S. military forces. They said they had treated 394 war wounded that week. Now what happened? If you don't know what happened, let me repeat it very briefly again. There was an attack on a hospital. It wasn't a one shot bombing by mistake. It continued for 30 minutes. The hospital was well known to both the Afghan and the U.S. government. They had been notified many times about its exact location with GPS coordinates. As I just mentioned, over the last four years, they've treated between 20 and 25,000 people at that hospital. It's an active war zone. These are people who are combatants as well as people who are non-combatants. But the rules of war, the Geneva Convention, forbids shooting up hospitals just like shooting up ambulances or medics is forbidden. Nevertheless, that's what happened. And as this happened, they put out calls again to the U.S. government, to the Afghanistan government, telling them that this was going on. It continued for 30 minutes. They say nine patients are still unaccounted for. They've been unable to reach 24 of the 416 staff members. Understand that the shooting in Oregon killed nine people. This killed at least 19. Perhaps uh, if we add those additional tolls to it, that could be uh, 19 plus another uh, 23 people. So that is a huge death toll. Is Obama interested in examining what happened here? No, no, he's in Oregon grandstanding. We're gonna talk about that, but just look at what they're not doing. Doctors Without Borders, and of course they often go by their French acronym MSF, is demanding an investigation by the International Humanitarian Fact-Finding Commission. They say that was established by the Geneva Conventions. It has not been used since it was established in 1991. And they say they're just trying to get some answers. This isn't a criminal investigation. It could very well be a criminal investigation, a war crime. But they say in terms of a single event, this is the worst thing that has happened to Doctors Without Borders in their long history. They say we fully communicated 
that it was a functional hospital full of patients and staff. It really shook us up in terms of the lack of respect for humanitarian law and also the lack of respect for life. And this is what they asked them from NPR. They said, well, what steps should be taken to ensure that hospitals are respected as fighting free zones? He says, actually, we don't need anything new. There are laws of war. We have the Geneva Conventions. Countries coming forward to support an independent fact-finding commission is the most fundamental action that can take place to ensure renewed respect for the laws of war. They say it's a golden opportunity for the U.S. to show its commitment to the rules of war. And yet what we're seeing here is that the U.S. is showing that it has no commitment to the rules of war. It has no commitment to the laws that govern international war. Instead of supporting an investigation like this. Obama is now using the tragedy in Oregon, the shooting by one individual who was hopped up on SSRIs or psychotic drugs, most likely based on the connections to his psychological treatment, the comments that he made about being a lithium lover. Instead, he's using that to try to take away the Second Amendment from us. I want you to also look at the difference in the way the mainstream media is looking at this. Has the mainstream media talked about this hospital shooting by Obama? No. Compare this to 10 years ago when there was a game that came out called Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. That was something that was done for the uh, Xbox 360 community. It was something that created a great deal of controversy. Wikipedia has an entire entry just about the controversies surrounding the release of this game. Why was it controversial? Well, because the game was depicting an attack, a terrorist attack on a Russian airport and inviting you to participate as a terrorist in shooting up civilians. Many people thought that was way over the top, and it was way over the top. It was an optional level. It was called No Russian, because they say don't, they say no Russian speaking. Nevertheless, it was also meant to uh, mean that no Russians are going to be left alive. They say you see civilians running and screaming in terror. You can see some clips of that here. The injured crawl away, leaving a trail of blood. Some try to drag others to safety, only to be shot with bloody results. The player is technically allied with the terrorists. Now, how did people react to this? In Russia, they said, you're not going to sell this game. So they removed it from the, they removed the PC version of the game. They delayed the introduction of the console edition. Now, Activision says that that had nothing to do with it. They had planned on doing that nevertheless. But look at how they treated it in Japan and Germany. In Japan and Germany, if you shot any civilians, immediately you got a game over. Game over, pal. You're out of there, okay? In the United Kingdom, it was discussed in the House of Commons. It was discussed by religious leaders on BBC One. And a British Muslim forum compared the game to the works of Joseph Goebbels, commenting that while people called it merely entertainment, Goebbels himself said that Adolf Hitler's films did more to psych the German people up for war than his speeches ever did. And as a result, calling it entertainment isn't sufficient. It doesn't justify it. We had a lot of people complaining internationally, domestically, about Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, 10 years ago, and rightfully so, I think. Yet, do we have anything like that today? One more comment here. PC Gamer, 2012, they asked one of the des game designers after he had moved on to another company why he did it. He said he mentioned that the version felt cheap and gimmicky. He said it felt like we were touching on something raw and emotional and then shying away from it just as soon as it became uncomfortable. But this is what he had to say that I thought was very telling. He said, it isn't really relevant whether it makes you enjoy the entertainment experience even more because you're being naughty like in Grand Theft Auto, or if it engrosses you further into the story and makes you resent your actions. What's important is that it makes you feel something at all because we've gotten so numb to all of the violence, isn't it? People are, seem to be numb to what's going on in Afghanistan as well, the shooting up of a hospital, perhaps 50 people killed, patients burning to death in their beds. And yet the mainstream media is not numb to this. They are silencing all the cries about this. Understand that the Pentagon and the Obama administration have a chance to do something about this. They could investigate it. They could offer an explanation for it. Other people could try them for war crimes. Of course, that's not going to happen. We've seen four different stories in four days from the Pentagon, all contradicting the previous day's stories. We've seen this happen before. We saw it happen with the shooting of an ambulance 
Remember that video that was leaked by WikiLeaks by Manning? Manning went to jail. Julian Assange has been under siege in a British embassy, and that has a lot to do with it. The fact that they exposed the war crimes of the American military in Iraq. They had innocent, they'd shot up innocent civilians. And then as an ambulance was pulling up to help these people and loading them in the ambulance, you can hear the guys laughing about it as they shoot up the ambulance from a distance and record it on video. Come on. Now, this is the government, this is the government that wants to have a monopoly on force here in America. This is the government that Obama, when he takes an oath to the Constitution, he uses that to get his authority for his regime. And yet he's using the Constitution merely as a beard. He doesn't believe in it. Clearly, he doesn't believe in it. Not even a week ago, we reported, and we've talked about this here on Infowars.com, Obama mocks gun rights activists. Remember that about a week ago? He said they're crackpot conspiracy theories. He said they think that any gun safety measures are somehow an assault on freedom or they're communistic or they're a plot by me. That wasn't even a week ago. Understand that yes, that is the way the communists work. It was Mao who said that power comes out of the barrel of a gun. And you know what? Any gun safety measures is not what we're looking at here. We're looking at a deliberate infringement upon the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms, a right that is our right as individuals, our God-given rights that are recognized by the Constitution that gives him his authority. And yet he's going to go around that. Here we are, less than a week later, we have the Washington Post, we have CBS, we have NBC, we have all the major mainstream news media is saying that Obama is weighing, doing, extending background checks through executive authority. Now they've admitted that it wouldn't have stopped any of these last shootings, though the one that was in South Carolina or this one would not be stopped by background shootings. And of course, they're not going to look at the background of the individual. Are they on SSRI drugs? Are they on drugs that make them homicidal, suicidal? No, they're not going to look at that. Instead, the Washington Post reports that he is seriously considering circumventing Congress. See, everyone knows that he is exceeding his legal authority under the Constitution. It's an open secret. They even say he's going to circumvent Congress. They say after the December 2012 Sandy Hook incident, they say Obama asked Vice President Biden to devise a list of policy proposals. And so he came up with uh, universal background checks on all gun cells. They say that failed in the Senate. Oh, so since you couldn't do this by the constitutional method of having the Congress and the, the Senate make the laws, you're just going to do it by executive order. They say that he went back and he, of course, banned almost all re-imports of military surplus firearms to private entities. He did that by executive order. He's already done infringement of the right to keep and bear arms by executive order. And understand they're saying the re-import of military surplus firearms. These are American weapons that should be turned over to private owners in America. They are the militia. We had a design where the militia, the people of this country, would be able to protect themselves, be able to protect the government, be able to protect themselves from the government, from criminals, that was called the militia. That was the purpose of this. They were very concerned about a standing army, but now, even though we have a permanent standing army, even though they have surplus weapons, if those weapons leave the country, Obama, by executive order, has banned their re-entry. That is infringement by definition. Infringement is gradually moving the borders of where you are onto somebody else's property, and our rights are our property. Now today our reporters were in Oregon to cover the landing of Obama and as he helicoptered in. We saw the massive security details there to protect him. And there were many protesters there. Roseburg residents are telling Obama to stop using the tragedy to take their liberty. Organizers accused him of using coward 